how nerve-wracking is it to walk in as the new drag, the youngest dragon that they've oh, ever had? Oh, nothing compared to walking in here. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. No, same, same thing. Four dragons. Yeah. Well, exactly. One yeah. go easy on me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Her uncle Malcolm's moving my furniture oh. next week, so I'm not going to fall out with her. <laughs> Poor Uncle Malcolm. Um, yeah, it must have been. How did it come about? Well, it's one of them things. I actually used to watch the programme when I was at university. So I did a, a management degree and it was one of those degrees. Right at the end of, the de the end of my, my studies, we had Dragon's Den literally launched that year. And ever since, I mean, you can imagine as management yeah, students, yeah. we hung on yes, there everywhere. Like yes. Peter Jones was just God. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and so we would watch it and... And I just remember all the ever, ever since people would always say to me, hey, "You'd be brilliant on that show. You'd be brilliant on that show." And I always thought, "I'd love to go on that show." But you, you don't just ring up the BBC and say, "I'd like to be here." Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was telling one of my friends one day, you know, we were watching the program together, and he said, "Oh, you'd be brilliant on that show." I said, "I know, I'd love to do it." And he said, "Well, just give them a ring." I said, "I can't do that." So he did. Ah. So he literally rang the back end of last year, spoke to one of the producers. They said, yeah, absolutely, we're looking for a new female dragon. Send her down, we'll have a chat with her. And literally, Amazing. the rest is history. Amazing. Oh. But but they... How did it start originally, though, your, your um, empire? Yes, so I started at university. So I did a, a four-year degree in management. And one of those years, I went out and worked for a little tiny company. And honestly, I've always done crafts and loved crafts, but I didn't realise it was such a, like, a huge industry. Mm. I mean, it is literally... I'm in there all week over. Shops. Well, there yeah, you go. It, everybody yeah. does it. So, uh, so I went to work for this little tiny craft company. Just thought, I love that. I just love the people because mm. people who craft, yeah. it's not, it's not a hobby. It's a real passion. Mm -hmm. they, they just love what they do. And I thought, yeah, I'm going to start a business in that area. And literally, just threw a few ideas around. Started the from, business. From what I can make out, though, Sarah, right. your family are really, really supportive. And did you get that love of sort of that sort of artistic thing from your parents? I think you do. You know, I'm, I mean, growing up, me and my sister, my mum would do all sorts of craft stuff with yeah. us. And I remember my grand teaching me to knit and I could never quite get the hang of it. And, but, but I always loved trying. And then now with my kids, you know, even though I've got boys, but they still do craft yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we still bake and make cards. So I think it's just, if it's in your blood, it's in your blood, isn't now, it? Now, where you but, come from, I know pretty well because I've got friends who live near there. You're very plain speaking. <laughs> when you go on Dragon's Den, how did the people pitching ideas take it? From a woman. They might yeah. take it from a man, but what's it like? I do wonder sometimes if they actually even know what I'm saying. It's relatable because then young people out there who are studying business and have these dreams and hopes, maybe they're untouchable and think they could never reach it, but with someone like yourself there, they probably feel that they're, they're anything's an possible. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And not so normal though. Hey. I still feel just normal. I still <laughs> no, feel no, like no. just the same when you, woman. You were, all, you were presented at the palace. Well, you should know, darling. Oh, you yeah. were right there. I oh, know. Rivaldo's getting his knighthood, and there you were. Well, that day, you know, you were in the audience. And, I mean, you won't know this, but you were about four seats up from my mum. And all my mum literally has text every member of the family. I mean, never mind that her daughter was getting an MBA. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't believe I'm sat next to Penny like this. <laughs> in her eyes, she was sat oh, next to you, <laughs> even though you were in the same oh. room. So how, how do you how do you manage to juggle now motherhood with this being this incredibly successful entrepreneur? Do you know I get asked that all the time, and I must be the luckiest person alive because I have the most unbelievable support network. So, like, today, my mum and dad have got the kids, and then tomorrow uh, we've got a board meeting, so Simon's mum and dad have got the kids, and then my husband works in the business, so we juggle if one's doing drop-off, one's doing pick-up, and we literally and just family, make yeah. it work between us. Lovely. But, Sarah, um, I read that go. you do something like 150 transatlantic flights. How do you do that and still hold it all together at home? Again, really good support network. I, what I've learned to do is I hate... I do have to travel to America a lot, so I just came back on Saturday and I'm going back on Monday. Whoa. And I do a lot jet of work lag? on... <laughs> no time for jet lag. <laughs> jet lag implies you have to have had a lot of sleep, you know, to <laughs> realise you're on a different time zone. <laughs> it, um, but, yeah, I've just, I've just kind of learned to get on with it. And for me, the priority is the kids and yeah. then the business. As long as they're all right. And I kind of have to just come down the pecking order a little bit. So I've just learned... People say, how do you sleep on flights? Well, trust me, you if you're do. that tired, yeah, you'll you sleep anywhere. You go, you go, what about kids? still being based in the north of England? Is that really important to you? Yeah. I mean, well, you can tell. Mm. You, you, you can take the girl out of the North East, mm -hmm. but you can never... I could never go anywhere and people not know. 
straight away where, she, where yeah, I'm from. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. something I'm just so proud of. I'm proud of yeah. my roots. And also, as we build the business, I kind of pledge that we'll never move out of the North East. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I love the fact that we're creating all this employment in the mm -hmm. North East. Mm -hmm. So we have, you know, our businesses. Yeah. Before we go, is there a lot of competition between the dragons? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> he's me thought they would go easy on me. No. And literally, I think day one, they, they eased into me. Day two, that was it. And it was, uh, it was fair game. Fair game. <laughs> well, watch this, this Sunday, you'll see the claws come out. Oh, ah, <laughs> really? Um, you've spent the most money so far, I, I, I oh, believe. Oh, I them you've how to do it. Oh, I love I that. I hate when they do don't it. invest. <laughs> I sit at home going, that's really good. <laughs> do you know what? Um, I kept picturing I was uh, one of those viewers at home thinking, yes, you've got to do it. So, so it's on BBC Two, 8pm starts this Sunday? Starts on Sunday. Good luck with you all. Can't wait to watch it. Yeah, Love yeah, the programme. So lovely to meet you, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs>